his woman to be with his man. Welcome to the wedding ceremony of Keegan Yingling, Kayla McDaniel. To get, today we get to witness something extraordinary. About a year and a half ago, the Yingling family began preparations to move from Canton, Texas to Kansas City, Missouri. In the midst of that move, Keegan was looking to stay in Texas to finish his schooling. <laughs> so I offered to let him stay in our home, for which he said yes. I thought he was staying because he really enjoyed game nights at our house. <laughs> but little did I know that he had an ulterior motive, which focused more around being with Kayla than it was hanging out with me. So, Keegan, you have chosen wisely. So we find ourselves here at the wedding ceremony, ready to witness something extraordinary. For the last month, Kayla and Keegan have had multiple conversations led by a book called Catching Foxes. The premise for the book is based off of Song of Solomon 2.15. Catch the fox for us, the little foxes that are ruining the vineyards while our vineyards are in blossom. And the book scripturally identifies key areas, foxes, that look to trample and destroy the beauty of marriage. Then leads conversations that address the motives of the heart. So today, I want to remind Keegan and Kayla about some of those conversations in front of this audience. Jesus laid the timeless foundation for marriage in Matthew 19, 4 through 6, when he responded to the trapping questions of the Pharisees. Matthew says this, Have you not read that he, meaning God, who created them, he's talking about humanity, from the beginning made them male and female? And said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. This was not a new decree. It originated in Genesis 2, 24. And it's emphasized throughout all of the Old Testament. But this truth was and is easily neglected. When an ordinary man and an ordinary woman come together before God in the world to become husband and wife, something extraordinary begins to happen. God joins them together. Most likely the majority of the world began dreaming of marriage not as a way to sacrifice our desires and wants, but as a way to fulfill them. So approaching marriage as a means to fulfill this will only put a weight on your spouse that they cannot carry and were never meant to carry. Although today Keegan is clean shaven and looking sharp, <laughs> Kayla's beauty is, is radiant. Before me are two imperfect people who have selfish desire. If they place their longing for purpose on their spouse, they'll be left unfulfilled because one day it's not gonna be the wedding day. One day they'll look different than they do now. Hearts fixed on personal desire will breed conflict and distance. So what is the solution? Hearts that have been and continue to be transformed by Jesus Christ. Kayla and Keegan each individually have seen the empty attempt to please God on their own and have put their trust in Jesus alone. He took their place. He died that they might live. And because of their commitment to follow him, their purpose in life has been changed from pleasing self to glorifying and enjoying God. So too, the purpose of this marriage is to display God's glory, not our own, and to make much of Christ's eternal union with the church, not our temporary desires. It's this truth that filters every conversation, every conflict, every decision, every dream, every purchase, every plan. We're not to live for each other, but to live beside each other for the Lord. Our lives are not to men, 
are not meant to revolve around each other. They are meant to revolve together around Jesus Christ. So today, as we see images of this wedding, we should be reminded of the deep covenantal love of Christ for his bride, the church. Revelation paints the picture of the wedding scene, of preparation, of promise, of fulfillment, of enjoyment. Paul in Ephesians 5 says that the human marriage helps explain this mystery of Christ in the church. It provides a visible picture of an invisible reality. The physical relationship gives body to a spiritual truth. The temporal covenant points to the eternal covenant. Marriage is a visible, physical, temporal covenant that pictures and bodies and points to the eternal covenant between Christ and the church. So Kayla, Nikki, these are weighty and beautiful things that are portrayed in marriage. May your pursuit of honoring God in your marriage be distinguished from all other forms of marriage, not by the absence of sin, but by the presence of redeeming and reconciling grace. Would y'all join me in praying? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can celebrate this day for a life that's made possible in Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for Kayla and Katie and, and for this moment, for your faithfulness in the past, uh, how you've been present, um, how you've uh, counseled and guided and um, been at every high moment and every low point this uh, so far. And God, I thank you that uh, you, you don't leave us or forsake us, uh, that you are the very thing that our hearts and souls long for and need. And so we pray for Kayla and Keegan, that they would be complete in you alone. God, that in finding their completion, they would be able to walk beside each other and bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. So God, today with this ceremony, we pray that every piece, every picture, every moment, would give attention and exalt the name of Jesus as we celebrate this wedding day of Kayla. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A covenant. A covenant is an agreement between two or more parties. It involves promises. It involves pledges. It requires witnesses. Often it involves signs and symbols to help those included in the covenant to remember and celebrate the exchange. So you, this audience, uh, made up of family and friends, are our witnesses today of this marriage covenant. And so we're now going to take a moment to use a lock to symbolize the uniting of these two families. So. <laughs> God's grace work, working within me. By God's grace working within me. I promise to respect and 
encourage to support you. During the good times and when our way becomes difficult. During the good times and when our way becomes difficult. I will continually strive to love you as Christ loves his church. I will continually strive to love you as Christ loves his church. That together we may grow in his likeness. That together we may grow in his likeness. I pledge my faithfulness to you alone. I pledge my faithfulness to you alone. As long as God gives us life. In the presence of God, our friends and family, as you, Keegan, to be my husband, by God's grace working within me, I will love you unconditionally. I promise to respect, encourage, good times and when our way becomes difficult, I will submit to you as the church submits to Christ. Together we may grow in his likeness. I pledge my faithfulness to you alone. As long as God gives us life together. The wedding rings are a constant and public reminder of the vows you've made to each other. So they're an outward sign of an inward commitment you've made in your hearts. Kayla, this is for you. Keegan has given you this ring as a symbol of his promise to be your faithful and loving husband. By accepting this ring, Kayla, you take Keegan to be your husband. Keegan, Kayla has given you this ring as a symbol of her promise to be your faithful and loving wife. By accepting this ring, Keegan, do you take Kayla to be your wife? Because of your promise to each other before God and these witnesses, it's my honor <laughs> to pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Continue to celebrate something extraordinary today. Woo! Woo! Woo!